Okay. Go ahead. All right. Good morning, everybody. Once again, we're going to continue uh, here with basically all uh, transitions. Um, that was the last part of chapter 19 that we still have to deal with. And um, when we talk about transitions and um, that show contrast, first we are going to uh, make a very uh, quick review of what you already know. All right, I wrote it on the board so you uh, will remember exactly what you know, we have been talking about. Here, as you have just taken a test on other clauses, and which are those words that introduce, um, they show contrast, and of course they introduce unexpected result. What words are those? And if you remember, we have even though, although, or though, all right, they all mean and exactly the same. They are uh, interchangeable. And they could be used, of course, in a um, sentence. For example, if we have one of those typical examples that we have always been talking about. If I say, for example, although, I studied very hard, Now, you will tell me what would be that unexpected result. Although I studied very hard, and then what are we going to say? If we are talking about unexpected result and something, an idea that shows contrast, of course, we know that if a person studies hard, and we tell you to do that every day, that you know you are going to do very well that you are going to achieve right and be successful but here this is an expected contrast so what are we going to say so we're going to say although i studied very hard what happened um, i failed my biology class. Mm, that's right. All right. And that is, of course, with those um, um, adverbs right there that will show contrast. And as we start those, um, you know, the clauses with those. We could use, of course, like I said, even though, although, or though. All right. Now, we also have studied conjunctions. Mm -hmm. Remember how we call these ones that were the coordinating conjunctions mm -hmm. that we are going to use um, connecting and linking ideas, mm -hmm. connecting independent sentences. And what do we have in here? Conjunctions. With, um, and we have here which are the ones that express exactly what we want to, um, the meaning we want to express. Those are, um, but, and it could be, or you could use still, or yet, or I'm still, or, uh, with anyway, right? A possible combination, not necessarily. And how do we express just about the same idea that we have there in our first sentence with the adverb? How could we say exactly the same thing? Very easily, right? What are we going to say? Same thing says, um, I studied very hard. And how do we go? This is my independent sentence says we know that we need to have a comma and connect with that but uh, I failed, I failed my biology class, but uh, how we, if we want to say, but I still, you don't need to say that, but that is like, um, it's built in. 
but I failed my biology class, and we could say to emphasize that that anyway at the end, but we do not need to say that. So we are saying exactly the same thing. We are offering an idea that offers contrast and an unexpected result. Because when we say, I studied very hard, eh, you are expected to say, I did very well, I did great, all right? So that's, that's something that, you know, we need to think about and as we could express it in different ways. Here with the adverb and in using an adverb clause, or here connecting two sentences, remember two independent sentences, um, with but, all right? Or yet, which is exactly the same thing as you remember. Now, um, we have that. Now we are coming here to something and some words that we still have not, and we have mentioned before, but we have not dealt with them in detail. All right, and what do we have here? We have nevertheless, that means exactly the same thing as nonetheless, and the same as however. All right, so what, how, what, how can we say or think about this statement? Exactly the same way. If I say, mm -hmm, I, we're going to say it again here, same example. <coughs> I studied hard, and then we're coming with any of those words mm -hmm, that have exactly, that, that convey exactly the same meaning. Mm -hmm. But they are transition words, and the, that's what we want to have here. Um, what are we going to say? I studied hard, and we have different ways of connecting with these transition words. If we're connecting it um, within the comma and um, I mean a semicolon and a comma, we could say here nevertheless or however. Uh, or, you know, nonetheless. And what happens after we use it like this? We could definitely, we should have a comma to make it, you know, the right punctuation. Nevertheless, I failed my biology class. Mm -hmm. That's punctuation, which is something that, of course, we need to remember. Okay? And then we have right here, um, if you want to, mm -hmm. I said it hard, and you can stop your sentence there. It would be a very short sentence. Remember what I have always been telling you, that uh, the longer your sentences get, uh, the better you, know, you can show that you are really you know, in command of, uh, a linguistic command or mastery of the English language. And the longer the sentences are, uh, the better they sound. And a lot of what we do in language is connect ideas, make transitions, make bridges that actually uh, show exactly what we're talking about, the connection of those ideas. But you're not wrong if you say, if you have a very long sentence mm, before and then you decide to say, for example, period, however, or any of these other ones, remember, they all work the same way. But you always have to use a comma after the word however, when you start your sentence. And if you say something, if you, you know, for example, I could say, um, my salary is uh, a little bit higher this year. However, mm, I uh, still cannot buy a new car. Okay, all right. So that's, you know, you, after you say however, naturally you're going to pause when you are speaking. So in writing, the way you show that you make a little, uh, that you 
idea to pause in there is by indicating that with a comma. All right. So now we could also have, and we talked a little bit about in the other lecture about how sometimes all of these transition words appear somewhere in the sentence hmm. and could be in in the sentence or at the end of the sentence for example we could say all right we could have that and says i hmm, failed my biology class And says, however, and if that comes, this comes at the end of the sentence as an afterthought, or we could say I, and if we put it in the middle of the sentence right here, almost I, however, failed. my biology class all the same right so when we put it in the middle of the sentence i however that is going to be set up between commas remember we could use however like these we could use any of all these nevertheless nonetheless okay we could all they are interchangeable the meaning is exactly the same you're saying exactly the same thing okay so there are many examples that we can give for example if I say um, I work a lot in my garden however it doesn't look very good okay or I could say, nonetheless, it doesn't look very good. Or, uh, nevertheless, it doesn't look very good. All right? And, uh, for example, we could say, Maria spends a lot of time in her kitchen. And remember, we want to give the idea of contrast or an expected result. And we could say, nevertheless, her food doesn't taste very good. Okay? Or, nonetheless, her food doesn't taste very good. Or, however, her food doesn't taste any good. Or, her food doesn't taste any good. However, hmm? whatever is the choice, I always, you know, recommend that um, and suggest that the students write those connectors these you know these are all um, transitions and connectives as they are called in our textbook that you start your idea with that so you do not get confused okay usually of course we could use all of these forms that you will see them uh, for more specific or emphatic purposes written elsewhere like that okay so that's that's you know what we have for these and it's remember we are dealing with what we say is a very emphatic very emphatic you know um, if, um, here um, a contrast where we show unexpected result okay and um, now we have a set of prepositions that are used and we are going to um, try to use them and show you how they, there are a few more using these words and prepositional, really they are prepositional phrases. For example, all right, we are okay with the old though and okay also with these transitions. Mm -hmm. These are the transitions that you're going to be practicing and this is also something that we are going to be practicing. All right. Now, we are going to
for these prepositions and then it goes into you know a clause despite the fact that it was raining heavily yes we have uh, despite the fact that it was raining heavily all right and we can do the same thing with in spite of the heavy rain in spite of and we could go ahead and do exactly the same thing in spite all the facts look at that same thing in spite of the fact in spite of the two lots in spite of the fact that it was raining heavily Who would think that people will be getting married, right? The couple 
got married outside. Whoops, forgot outside here. The couple got married outside. All right, the couple got married outside. All right, so this is a very, very common form of the language too. In spite of or in spite of the fact that, okay, very, very common. Both of them, the same as despite the fact that and, and despite, okay. Here, of course, we could say in spite of the heavy rain, and here we could say in spite of the fact that it was raining heavily, or we could also say something referring that there was a heavy rain Whichever way you want to express it. The idea is that you're introducing a complete clause in here, in spite of the fact that there was a heavy rain. Mm -hmm. And here we could say this, despite the fact that there was a heavy rain, whatever the choice is, it's not a problem. But you are introducing uh, an entire clause that actually describes the action of raining, right? There was a heavy rain. No one is better than the other one. Okay. All right. So these are very, very common constructions in the language. And uh, uh, in spoken language, maybe they are, they are less common. But they are very common in the written language. And you need to know what you are saying. Once again, it's another way of offering that. Well, how could we say this if we don't say it? We go back to although, you know, we could say although it was raining heavily, the couple got married outside. Mm -hmm. All right, so it was raining heavily outside mm -hmm. and we could say but the couple got married or it was raining heavily but the couple got married. Okay, so we could connect um, it, you know, with any of these forms. Mm -hmm. These give you a lot of possibilities in trying to connect your ideas because this is it, this is what you're doing. You are connecting your ideas. And all of these are possible ways to express that, to show contrast and unexpected results. All right, okay. We're going to give you practice on these two. Now, for example, as, as we basically work, right? right. And we are going to just briefly refer to direct contrast. And you really know that with direct contrast. This is more of a very unexpected nature. For example, if you remember, how do we show that contrast? We could show it, you know, just basically with but, hmm? or also with what, okay? And see, for example, I, I was going to give you some uh, little you know, uh, homework with that. We could also just use it very, very direct okay, contrast. For example, uh, you say, my friend Leah likes to dance. Oh, this is quick marker. Likes to dance while I don't. Okay. But 
I don't, if I say that. It's easy, direct. But I don't. Okay, all right. All right. And we can say, however, if you want to just say, however. However, I don't. All right. So that is more of a direct contrast. And of course, you say, why? You could start. My friend, you could set it up, whatever, right? My friend Leah likes to dance. I don't. That's it. All right. So this shows a very direct contrast. Mm. And the other one is unexpected because we present situations when uh, reasoning over those situations, we can think that um, a person who studies, a person who works a lot in the kitchen, a person who does a lot in the garden, you know, all of those good things will deliver something good, but it doesn't. So that is why it's unexpected. All right. Okay. Now, this is a very short, very brief, very, very, very brief uh, presentation. And for the next presentation, we are going to go to the um, models, all the models in the present. All right. So bye-bye. I'll see you in a minute.